Welcome. In front of me is a Samsung Tab Active and today I will show you a couple tweaks and the tricks you can do on this tablet. So let's start off by opening up our settings and we're going to navigate to the display section where we'll have a couple different things. So number one we have the light and dark mode. Now apart from that being here we have additional settings associated with it so right here we can select it to turn on automatically or switch automatically either based on sunset to sunrise or on a custom schedule meaning that for instance during the daytime the device will be in light mode and during the nighttime it will automatically switch to dark mode giving you best of both worlds now scrolling down we'll have a couple different things and I'm looking for screen zoom no looks like we don't have a screen color mode or whatever they're calling it which is a bit weird but in any case so let's move over to the next one which is the navigation type here we can choose to actually have a gesture navigation if that is something that you want to utilize now on this device we do have the physical buttons right here at the bottom or side depending on how you're holding the device but if you just prefer the gesture navigation you can enable that and obviously the device will allow you to use those instead of the buttons but the buttons still as you can see function so you technically have access to both of them at the same time i personally prefer the gesture navigation so that's what i'm going to be uh, sticking with i do personally just like the back gesture a lot so anyway one more thing that you can also do is turn off the gesture hints in here which basically hides this bar at the bottom which does protrude a little bit as you can see it cuts into the uh, icon right here and if you turn it off it hides and obviously doesn't get in the way anymore now previously i would argue that this might not be the best course of action because samsung implementation of hiding the gestures is just by so just kind of moving it off the screen uh, which uh, causes problems uh, when you're trying to for instance go home it doesn't always register it and it's even worse when you're using a third-party launcher uh, from my experience but here if you have some kind of problem you can always just do this which obviously it's it removes that problem that i have on my device especially with a third-party launcher if my home gesture doesn't want to work i can just slap the button and the back gesture uh, for me at least worked pretty well it was only the problem that i had with the home gesture anyway let's uh, go back here now another thing that i wanted to show you is the edge panel which is this thing right here it is turned on by default which come on there we go uh which can pull out at any kind of in any kind of application and you have access to a couple different applications right here now the first three uh, basically above this little line right here uh, will change depending on your most used applications and the three below here are ones that you can add now that being said you can add more than three in here you can have decent amount of them and just to showcase this i'm just gonna there we go so as you can see i added a unreasonable amount of application i would say and we can now go back and we can now scroll down on it so just we'll add more and more applications which you can then swipe down on now the reason you might also be interested in this apart from you having access to uh, your applications at a quick side panel pull is because it will also allow you to quickly open up applications in split screen so you can either drop it here and it's gonna appear on this side you can move it to the other side and obviously the same thing we can close it or we can drop it in the middle and it will open it up in a pop-up view now we do have a couple options and here when you when you tap on this blue bar it gives you the option to again go to split screen you have minimize option you have maximize option and close when you minimize it it will switch into the app head and you can have multiple of them you can also have multiple pop-up windows like that open so let's just add several additional ones i 
So you can see we have right now four different pop-up windows open that we can interact at the same time with. Now, this probably might not be the most optimal setup, so you could, for instance, grab one of these. Should allow me to kind of, come on. There we go. To split it. So there we go. And obviously we can also minimize all of these. Now the device is uh, slowing down a little bit because we do have uh, a little bit too many applications open. But as you can see from here, we can open up all of them and pick also which one we want to open. If you want to just pick one. And last thing that I'm going to uh, show with this specific thing is the app pairs. So right now I have, I'll just get rid of these actually. Uh, so right now I have opened settings and gallery application at the same time. And I just closed it by mistake. Um, skip that. So I had settings. Let's, uh, let's add YouTube, whatever. So as you can see right now, we have split applications, settings, and YouTube, and it doesn't show up right here. Uh, I just want to point that out because when we do this, it's now visible right here. And what you can do is grab it, drag it below, drop it, and get buggy galaxy experience fantastic now let me show you how it actually is supposed to work when uh samsung decides to get their shit together so here's my phone just whip that out and i have two that i have pre-made right over here i can just tap on them and you can see it opens up all three applications i do have set three applications right here can i get rid of this yes i can so can see it works pretty well and it allows me to open it up you can also swap it so yeah it, it works not sure why it's not doing anything here right, when you press on it i have one idea i'm gonna check it out right now just in case so let's add something like two different browsers maybe youtube is just a little bit annoying after all it's youtube oh there it is okay so now i have two different ones let's try that again come on samsung you're making this much harder than it needs to be So it opens it up when they're open. Now let's see if we just get rid of it. Again, nothing. Anyway, I'm done trying to figure it out. Uh, Samsung stupidity right here. Obviously they can't design the shit correctly. So let's move over to something else. Uh, so another thing that I wanted to show you is the uh, sound. Now, I don't recall exactly how the option is called. Uh, that basically allows you to tailor the uh, sound profile to your specific hearing or also to your, uh, for instance, earbuds. Now, this is catering more towards hearing loss uh, rather than earbuds, but because the way it's designed, it should also work with, uh, with earbuds the same way. So I'm going to explain this once I show you where the option is. So let's go in the sound and vibration. Scroll all the way down to the sound quality and effects and we're going to select allow and we're going to select adapt sound now that being said this will only work if you have some kind of uh hearing thing plugged into it so either earbuds headphones uh, wired or wireless it doesn't matter but it will not work with the speakers itself of the device so by default uh we have a couple options right here that are pre-made so we have uh 
basically different kind of aid groups right here that would have its own specific uh, equalizer set for this kind of aid range hearing loss. So under 30, 30 to 60 and 60 and over. And obviously the older you get, the less you can hear. Uh, you kind of, you're, you lose hearing based on uh, your age and also what sounds you primarily hear. So this tries to combat that problem. Uh, by boosting these specific frequencies to be a little bit more audible. Now, with that being said, I don't recommend picking one of those. What I recommend doing is going to test my hearing. So the way this would work is you put on your earphones, earbuds, whatever, and you go through the test my hearing and it will start playing sounds either on left or right ear. And all you need to do is select if you can hear it or not. And there's like 10 or 15 different ones that you go through. Once you finish those, those up, uh, it then creates a specifically tailored equalizer to your hearing. Now, like I said, this is specifically done for hearing, but because if you have a, a lower end earbuds, as an example, some cheap ones, uh, those might not be as good at reproducing specific sounds, maybe like bass, uh, high or low frequencies, depending on the earbuds obviously so when you're going through to test my hearing and it's trying to test if you can hear it or not it would technically also be testing if your earbuds are capable of producing this kind of sound out of this uh low of a volume and obviously if you select that you can't hear it it will boost that specific frequency a little bit higher and therefore might give you a more fuller sound afterwards even though your hearing might be just fine without much of a problem uh, it still might make your listening experience to like music and stuff uh, better with this option and this with this is going to apply to basically everything so any kind of sound that is going to be played through the device onto like any kind of peripherals like uh, like i said headphones earbuds and stuff like that uh, will be going through this setting so the sound will go first get modified and then reach you so pretty nice option Now let's move over to the home screen. Uh, here we have a couple options related strictly to home screen. So we can customize the upgrade right here. So we can fit more applications. By default, it looks to be set to five by five, uh, but you can squeeze a little bit more and make it six by five. So this is more visible right here. So it packs them, uh, packs them a little bit more tightly uh, and allows you to fit more applications on a single screen. Now this is relating to home screen, but when we do apply, it will also apply to the app tray as well. Now let's see what else we got in here. So we have home screen and layout. This allows you to choose between the all apps on the home screen, kind of like an iPhone would um, or used to do, or the app tray which is my preferred go-to, which also comes enabled by default. But if you want to have all your applications on the home screen, you can select that right over here. Then we have a couple things relating to the application appearance, if we can call it that. So for instance, we have the app icon badges. I don't think I have anything to showcase this with. Yep, there isn't any. Uh, but when you have any application that gives you a notification, you'll have the app badge right here. If you find it that it's just kind of not fitting with what you're looking for in terms of like style, you can turn that off right here or you can also change how it's being displayed. So you have a number, which is the default one. So usually it gives you like specific, for instance, email. It shows you how many emails you have. Uh, so not just say like 30, but you can just change it to a dot. So it won't show you how many you have. It will just show you that you have, you have something. But obviously, if you want to hide it, you can completely turn that off. Now, another thing uh, right here is the swipe down for notification panel. Now, this didn't used to be enabled by default. Uh, it is now by the looks of it, or maybe someone changed it. I'm not exactly sure, but in any case, if it's turned off for you by default, I highly recommend utilizing that. It allows you to access your uh, notifications by swiping down anywhere on your home screen. So you don't need to reach all the way to the top to swipe it down. You can just do it from the bottom of the screen. As long as you have enough space to swipe down, it will give you the, uh, the notification tray, which is pretty nice, especially if you're trying to use this device one-handed mode. So in 
this kind of way. Obviously it makes it significantly easier for you to be able to reach uh, the toggles without needing to like shift your hand position. Yeah, so there we go. Anyway, I'm gonna conclude this on the little app tray or notification tray tweak. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and thanks for watching. <laughs>